Welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. And yes, if you couldn't tell already, we are using a different camera today. Um, I actually found there's this program in my school where I can borrow camera equipment, which is really awesome. So my Pentax Q is in my hand right here. We are not going to use this um, during this installment of AA Computers and Technology. Actually, I might use it once, just once to compare the uh, video between this camcorder uh, and my Pentax Q. But let's go ahead and get started. Today's going to be a pretty short video because I'm doing this just mainly as a test for the uh, Canon, thanks to Vixia is what it's called, uh, R52. Uh, and we're going to be testing this camera today, see if it's any better than the standard Pentax Q that we use in all the other videos uh, because I th am thinking about upgrading our uh, camera hardware. So I have this Dell Inspire on 15 right in front of me. We're going to be taking a look at some of the upgrades I performed on this PC because when I initially bought this, it was pretty sluggish. Um, and it wasn't really up to what I wanted it to be. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what I did to the system. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep this video nice and short. Uh, there's not going to be too much content in it, so the shorter the better. But as you guys know, I usually go way, 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 way over with my timing. So we'll see how this works out. But anyway, I picked up this laptop at Walmart for 200 bucks. Got it during a Black Friday sale, uh, and it fit the bill and what I needed. I needed a lighter laptop because my Asus G75 gaming PC was just way too heavy. It was killing my back when I was carrying around to school and everywhere else. Um, so I needed something a lot lighter. This system was originally equipped with a dual core Celeron processor, 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM running at 1600 megahertz and a 320 gigabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive. And I have replaced the this hard drive with a silicon power solid state drive, a 120 gigabyte solid state drive, and then I've also added another 4 gigs of RAM into the system. And then as you can see right here, the system was originally equipped with Windows 8, but I have since upgraded that to Windows 10, and it's actually a lot faster. So let's go ahead, uh, check out what's under this little hood right here. This is where all of our hardware is ho housed, at least the hardware that we upgraded. And then I'll boot the computer up, and we'll check out how the performance has increased. Alright, so as you can see, I've opened everything up. You can see our Silicon Power 120 gigabyte S60 SATA 3 solid state drive right here. And if you haven't checked out my review on this, go ahead and check it out because it is a pretty nice drive for the price. I believe this is around 40 bucks. Uh, so not a bad deal there. As you can see, we have two sticks of RAM installed. As I said earlier, each stick is four gigabytes and each stick is clocked at 1600 megahertz. Um, so as far as hardware goes, that's about the extent of the upgrades and it has made a huge difference in this system's performance. These two small upgrades have made a massive difference in the system's performance. The computer boots in less than 5 seconds from a cold shutdown. I can open Adobe Premiere Pro in less than 3. Now, programs open so fast now, I can move files from place to place in the blink of an eye. Everything's just great with this system. Smooth as butter. With just $60 of additional hardware, you can take this budget laptop and turn it into a speed demon. So I'm going to go ahead and throw everything back together now and we will boot into the BIOS real quick. I'll show you all the system specifications. If you want to know more about the system in particular before I perform the upgrades, you can go ahead and check out my review of the Dell Inspire on 15. I'll post it in the description of this video so you guys can take a look at that. But I'm not going to go over uh, it too much here because once again, I've already made a video about it and I don't see a point. So I'm going to throw everything back in, we'll boot into Windows, check out the Windows Experience Index before and after the upgrades. Yes, I know, that's not really the best way to gauge performance. Uh, everyone always complains about the Windows Experience Index, but I think it's enough um, to see what kind of difference this solid state drive makes and the extra 8 gigabytes or extra 4 gigabytes of RAM. And of course, we will also check out a couple other aspects of this PC speed, such as the boot time, and I will demonstrate a couple programs running on these systems. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up. Hey guys, and check out this beautiful reflection in the screen. This is going to get really annoying really fast, uh, but I'm looking at the video right now and it appears really grainy. Uh, so I'm not really sure if this camera is going to produce something usable here. Hopefully it will. I'm going to take it into my video editing software and hopefully the final cut comes out all right. But I apologize about that in advance. Uh, it doesn't look too good right now, so not really sure what's going on there. I think that's just uh, one of the cons of this camera. It must have poor uh, low light performance. 
or I might be completely wrong and uh, we'll open up on the PC and it will look completely fine. But as I promised earlier, we're gonna take a look at the system specifications. They're all right here. This is the Inspiron 3521. We are rocking an Intel Celeron CPU running at 1.6 gigahertz. You can see all of our cache right there. You can see the 120 gigabyte solid state drive. It is detected. And as I said earlier, we had eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM running at 1600 megahertz. Let's go ahead and boot up the system and see how long it takes to get to the desktop. And that was no time at all. Of course, I still have to log in. And we are in. In total, that probably took under 10 seconds. Uh, it took a little bit longer than usual for some reason. It usually does take a little bit less time than that. I'm not really sure what happened there, but it's an anomaly. Uh, I'm not gonna retake that clip because I see no point in doing so. Uh, it's regression to the mean, guys. It's gonna be slow time sometimes. It's gonna be fast sometimes. Uh, it just depends on the day. So let's go ahead and open up a program. I'm gonna open up Adobe Premiere Pro first because that's probably the most taxing thing I have on the system. And you can see that will completely open up in under six seconds. Very, very speedy. Now let's try something that you would use every day. Not everyone's gonna use Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's go ahead and pop open Google Chrome. Ta-da, so that's great. Definitely under three seconds there, nice and speedy. And one last thing. Everyone uses Microsoft Office and Microsoft Word. Well, not everyone, of course. You know, some people use some open source alternatives. Even I use some open source alternatives. Um, but everyone uses a word processor. Let's just go with that. So let's go ahead and pop this open. And you can see that was actually probably under two seconds. I couldn't even count that. So this thing is just a speed demon. Earlier in this video, you guys were probably wondering what I was talking about. Windows Experience Index is no longer installed on Windows 10. Well, guess what? It is. They just took away the GUI. It's still in the system files. So we can go ahead and type in a command here. I pasted it right here. It's winstat formal v xml and then we're going to find a place to put that XML file in the C drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and run that real quick. And there is one more thing I should probably tell you guys, you need to open command prop as an administrator. I forgot to do that and I waited for 10 minutes and nothing happened and I was so confused. Uh, and then I realized I forgot to run it as an administrator. So now if we paste it here, it should work. There we go, everything's running. You can see um, uh, all the commands going off. So we should get a result any minute now. Now I was trying to find the easiest and most professional way to do this. And I can tell you that this probably isn't the way, but because of the XML files, awkward layout. Um, I can't really put these two side by side and do a side by side comparison on the screen. Um, so I'm gonna have to uh, dart between the image over here which is the snapshot of the previous uh, record and then the new record right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we had before. For CPU calculations per second we had a 5.7, for RAM we had a 5.9, uh, our graphics scored a 4.6, and that was really holding the system back before, and it still is. Our gaming graphics were rated at a 6.1, and our primary hard disk uh, scored a rating of 5.9, and I expect that to be a lot higher now. Now, as you can see over here, layout's just a tad bit different, but you can tell what's what. Uh, for our system score, we scored a total of 5.6. Um, our memory score was a 7.6 dual channel, channel memory now. Um, our CPU score is sitting a little bit higher at a 5.9. Um, now, these scores do tend to vary between Windows uh, versions of Windows, so it's not going to be 100% identical to what we had over here. Our uh, video encoding score was a 6.3. Oh, I'm not even in the right place. Right there, our graphics scored a 5.6. Uh, these look to be a little bit off. I'm not trusting these ratings. A 9.9 .9 does not sound right there. And I'm going to scroll over to our hard drive rating. And our disk scored a... Oh, this is so awkward to navigate. But our disk right here scored a 8.1. That is a massive improvement. In my opinion, these scores accurately reflect the system performance increase. Definitely a huge difference between then and now. 
After using this computer for a couple of weeks, I can tell you guys that the upgrades were definitely worth it. Thanks for watching, guys, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Please don't forget to like this video, and of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell me what you guys thought of the new camera. Did you like the video quality? Um, how's the sound? Because I am using the built-in microphone, uh, because I am thinking about purchasing this particular model. I did have a couple of times in the video where I got really frustrated with it. I deleted three clips on accident, had to do them all over again. Uh, that's always fun. Uh, so tell me what you thought of the camera. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.